Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Thursday Throwdown. My name is Dr. Fish. I will be your op, and I will be one of your casters for the first match. And alongside me, casting is going to be Nice Jewish Owl. Hello, sir. How are you? Hello, hello. Doing well. Doing well. All right, so our first match we have for tonight is going to be Lefty2111 versus Chewbacca. So this is five seeds for Dirty Mike and the Boys and Hearthstone Academy. We have classes on the screen. We do have bands as well. So mind taking a guess with Druid Priest Rogue Shaman versus Druid Paladin Ro Rogue Shaman. What classes got banned? Well, you know, I was looking at looking at the stats, looking at decks, and best deck in Hearthstone right now is like Poison Rogue with Knolls. The second best deck in Hearthstone right now is Thief Rogue, Rogue. and the third best deck is Poison Rogue without Knolls. Uh, so when you get to the fourth best deck, you can finally stop playing Rogue. Uh, but considering both these players have one of the three best decks, I'm guessing it was a Rogue ban. <laughs> yep, you'd be absolutely correct. We have double Rogues off the board. Um, yeah, so it's interesting. We're going to have a uh, Druid Priest Shaman versus demon hunter paladin shaman um kind of uh, uh give me your general thoughts on how you think this can play out i know there's quite a bit of flexibility in some of these classes yeah i think the most interesting bring for me is this priest from lefty because I, I there's a few ways you can go with it um you know the the aggro shadow priest from last expansion is still quite good in the libram paladin if lefty has decided to go for that 
Uh, we could also see some variation of Big Priest hoping to bully the Paladin uh, and the Demon Hunter, or even a Miracle Priest to try and bully Demon Hunter and Shaman. Uh, I think all of those make sense, but considering how little Priest there is out there, I'm interested to see um, both what Lefty chose and whether he's been playing it a lot or not, because they're not easy decks to first time in a match. Uh, from Shu, I just expect very standard Fell Demon Hunter, Libram Paladin, and Shaman's a little more flexible. If you expect aggro, you can go with Quest. Mm -hmm. If you don't really expect aggro, you can go with Bull Nerd, have some disruption and a combo finish. Mm -hmm. I think both are decent brings here. For sure. So I'm going to let the players go ahead and start, because, you know, when we're at this point in the stream, it is 8 o'clock, and... And we've got them going right on time, which is fantastic. Keeping things right on schedule. So we have this match now, and then later on, I'm even just going to tell you, we got always just in time versus base Stink and hero, and that's always exciting. Um, so for us, for this match specifically, spectating, we're going to have Chewbacca as first to spectate, and we're going to have Lefty as second to spectate uh, on my screen. So once we get here into the match. Transition over. Just gonna wait for eyeballs. I will say, Chewbacca has been making a lot of claims about being the quote best five seed in Legacy, and there's a bit of a PR difference. But I know that Lefty is no slouch at Hearthstone, so I'm I'm hoping to see some some very high quality gameplay from someone claiming to be the best five seed. For sure. Going to be doing some judging here. Yeah, I, I'm going to be curious about how these guys lead off. Maybe maybe Lefty leads with that Paris to kind of go with what would be a bit more of a wild card class. Um, I, I I might lean maybe Shaman or Druid and said, I, I don't really know. I think Shu might just want to lead out with the Demon Hunter um, to see what he can do here. Yeah, I, think? I think one of the advantages of bleeding with priest is it's probably the most flexible of the archetypes or of the classes that lefty has mm -hmm. um so you can really catch your opponent off guard in that mulligan in early turns mm -hmm. if they don't know what deck you're playing and don't know how to play around it mm -hmm. um yeah, i i feel like if i'm true i probably open with either paladin or demon hunter because they're just the best all around decks. Yeah. It's like we're gonna get a shaman lead. <clears throat> Out of shoe. Versus Taranda. We do get that priest lead from left. Elements are frightful. Uh, are you able to spectate? I am lefty? not able to spectate lefty. I have sent him an I have sent him a message. So we can tell from Shu it is going to be that quest shaman. So probably expecting or hoping for an aggro shadow priest here. Definitely. I would agree with that. Um All right. That I can now spectate left. Yes. Uh, I see a quest, <laughs> I see mutinous, and I see a devout. Yeah, I don't think this is Acro Shadow Priest. Uh, me neither. This is uh, definitely cool. Definitely a quest priest. <laughs> I will say, I don't know how well... Well, I just looked it up. Uh, quest priest is apparently 16% into <laughs> quest shaman. So this might be a rough one for Lefty. <laughs> oh man, yeah, that that seems to that it would be a rough one. Yeah, I mean the the late game value of the shaman with charged calls and just burn comes online a lot faster than the priest quest usually yeah. does. Interesting, throwing the bolt in face. You never knew you wanted. 
So we can see in the early turns that um, Shu is indeed running. Um, he's running the canal sloggers in his list. I know that sometimes, based on the classes you see, sloggers are kind of optional. Um, generally, I wonder if he's teched it fully out for aggro uh, or not, or if he will keep over, if, or if he'll have overdraft in his deck. Yeah, my guess is the sloggers are in here as sort of a hedge against that aggro shadow priest. Yeah. I don't know if I'm a big fan of this flash heal pickup. I think I would have preferred to take a raise dead there. Uh, yeah, the flash heal good. does have that synergy with Zyrella. Definitely. Um, yeah. The there's sort of two options for Shu that turn. Uh Perpetual Flame and Sleep Breaker are both pretty decent because we're going to be coining multicaster next turn. Mm -hmm. Um it, it was just a question of do we play the two mana perpetual flame this turn? Coin multicaster, or do we play wind chill coin multicaster? Definitely. There is the option to greed and play both the wind chill and the perpetual flame this turn to juice the multicaster more, but I think I'd rather just play it here. Mm hmm. Um, Obviously, the overdraft. Actually, okay. now we have the option to perpetual flame coin bloom multicaster, and I like that even more. Yeah. And he will complete his quest off of that too if he go opts for it. Oh. Okay. Ops, okay. Ops to just hold. Huh. Interesting. So he's blooming to complete quest here, it looks like. I don't know. Oh, he's gonna... He's gonna trade his... His over... Draft, it looks like, potentially. I'm not 100% sure. We'll see. But... I think we want to play the yeah we yeah, play the multicaster, play multicaster first because we don't want to draw the overdraft again. Okay. Ooh, we played a lot. We played three different spells. School C. That would make sense. <laughs> oh, the zapper. Are we gonna bloom overdraft or? Hmm. I'm. Very interested by the order of these plays. We seem to be <laughs> like discovering and then blooming and then discovering. Yeah, it's definitely interesting. Yeah, I, I don't mind the, the overdraft play there, although it does play into board clear pretty hard. And yeah, you no know, priest probably has a board clear. Um, I don't think there's a play other than uh, like either. Renew or Flash Shield plus Zyrella. Flash Shield clear. Actually, we Renew and Flash Shield and then play Zyrella to get a full clear. Um, procs, or doesn't proc, but helps us complete next step of quest. Uh, I feel like any other play for Lefty seems fairly losing. Yeah, for sure. We now see that with the board type of board flood, he, he has to go for this heal and board clear. Uh, or it will get out of hand very, very fast. The charge, this charge call is already sitting at six drops, and uh, six drops are actually pretty good. Uh, so we are going to see the flash heal plus Zyrella to clear off this board. Has the option to play Renew or not? Um, I want to play the Renew here. I would just because I liked it as well. Yeah, yeah, we don't have a great play for next turn, so it lets us sort of fish for uh, ideally a three drop to play next turn, and that's a three drop. can complete quest next or no nah, he's a mana off but he's got has the cards in hand to complete quest in the coming turns um well we drew a better three drop so there's not very much pressure on board either so i kind of like just dropping the scorpion here
lefty seems to agree with just dropping that Scorpid. Um, Condemn, Shard, and Wave, all valid picks. The Condemn, probably the best option for this turn. Again, I think there's a decent argument for both Zyrella or Hysteria, but opts for the Hysteria here. Goes for Gift of Ruminants on the Scorpion. I like it. You're not getting in this way. Scorpions definitely put Chu in an awkward position of sort of not wanting to play big minions into them just because you know, you're, you're getting like four for one yeah. by the Scorpion. I will say there there is eventually a point where the priest has that and has the inevitability factor um but sit and they're sitting currently at five and six so it's gonna be a little bit i'd like to see tail i'd probably just like to see some form of quest completion whether it's playing the undying disciple or playing tail in yeah um, disciple lines up pretty well into this board so i think if i'm lefty i want to just drop the disciple here yeah i i would agree um, with that yeah, uh, it, it it just feels like it lines up a lot better than Tailwind. And Tailwind's also cheaper, so we can play it alongside more cards. There we go, Tailwind um, comes but, down. Yeah, it, if we played one of the two, it was probably fine. I think the only, like, incorrect play that turn would be playing something that wasn't a 5 or 6 drop. Shu does have to be concerned about muteness from this quest priest, so might be hesitant to complete quest this turn. Because especially if we play this Canal Slogger, we don't have any other minions in hand. Yeah. I think realizing that, opting for the perpetual flame. Uh, mm -hmm. Better to take a 50-50 than a completing zero. the quest in full, so we will see Brucon next turn. Mm -hmm. With the with the charged call, as well, very likely. So, yeah. well, so completing our priest quest is nice, but eating our opponent's quest reward is even nicer. I would. Slam oh, mutinous I would here. slam mutinous here and just pray. Yeah, yeah. You know, Brucon's coming down next turn, but also, you know, Brucon's in hand right now. Yeah. So, I would definitely just take the chance to eat it. Definitely, it's pretty devastating for Shu to have that happen. There we go. 50-50. Aww. Aww, 50-50. Eats the canal slogger. That's rough for Lefty. But it means that Shu will get to play his... Yeah. Um, we have to play his minion out. His I Brucon. will say, slight positioning error here by Lefty. We'll see if he ends up getting punished for it. But oh, we he really put... wanted to play this Mutinous on the other, other side, side of the Scorpid. Because now, yeah, if this charge call hits a Dark Moon Rabbit, it Everything does dies. full clear. Oh, uh, does not hit punished. it. Alright, Lockalar is probably the pick here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kill Talon, kill Mutinous, for sure. Yeah. Talon draws Light Shower Elemental. That is a six cost card, which can get played to complete the quest. Yeah, and we can also, we can trade this Scorpid in and then Hysteria and then play a 6-drop to get a full yeah, clear this turn. That seems pretty good. That does. Um, uh, uh, no, don't play the 6-drop first. No. I, I don't, I don't know if he play sees... Play the Hysteria. <laughs> I don't know if he, I don't know if he sees the his, he, he might not see the Hysteria line here. He might, yeah. um, but, um... I think, yeah, okay, oh, okay, okay. We're trading. It, it looks All like right. he's. It looks like he's. 
Come he on. might he might do it with an undying. I see hovering the hysteria. Yeah, yeah, he sees it. Cool. Yeah. So it's yeah, only, nice. it's only it's only a matter of, of if the totem lives or not. It does not live. <laughs> Everything dies. Undying disciple comes out. It's for some reason it can attack. I don't. It says it can attack. Uh, I, it's because there's a discover up. It's still showing up. Green oh, you're for right. whatever reason. There you go. Yeah, and then we take we take Scorpid, but I don't think we're gonna be playing Scorpid. Yeah. Many times. I agree. Well, we might play it alongside Soul Mirror. But we want to be playing a seven and an eight drop quickly. Uh, I don't know how much we wanted Lightning Storm. I guess it's not terrible, but uh, <laughs> Dark Moon. One thing to oh, we're just consider gonna take double, double when sevens. Oh, yeah. When you're playing Quest Shaman, one thing to remember. Once you complete the quest, you do not need to take both options off of Guidance. No. I see a lot of many, players just snap press that button. Many times, like, especially after all, I'll, I'll, even during, even when I know I have to pick both, I will still take the time to consider, even though I know I'm picking both, just to look at them and just be like, okay, well, if I wasn't having to, I think it's good to get in that habit of even just evaluating, even if you're snap picking. In the end, you're so gonna snap pick. Soul Mirror is Soul really Mirror's nice, nice here. here. It gets even nicer because we have this Zyrella. So we're going to get more sevens off of this Zyrella. Yeah. And we're probably also playing this Zyrella next turn. Mm, don't quite get Zyrella. Need to play an eight drop. Uh, so I meant the, oh. the hero card. It's hero confusing because we're running all Zyrellas. Oh, oh, Zyrella the Sanctified. Yes. Or, or not Zyrella the Devout. Z Zyrella the Sorry, sacrifice. Zyrella the Devout. This is the eight, the eight. Oh yeah, Zyrella the Devout is the eight cost card that will very likely get played. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, This is actually not too bad for Shu in the end because Lightning Storm does weaken the board severely and especially with a Novice Zapper yeah. next turn. I th with this turn, I think we'll just see that and probably a full board clear here um, of, of a Lefty's board and 20 damage. No, it's lethal. Yeah, it is exactly lethal with lightning bolt. Yeah, no, it's not. Is it? Is it? Oh, no, oh, no, wait, no, no, he, no, no. The, he has to bloom. Uh, he has to bloom. Yeah, He's the, blooming. He's the, blooming it. He's got it. Yeah, yeah. It I was forgot lethal. because the um the minion the call it dies. Yeah, the, the multicaster dies. Yeah, we draw more burns. So well, we also Easy. um yeah yeah we didn't have it with just the bolt. Oh, but bolt plus we had it with Lady Vosh plus a bunch of spells in our deck. Yeah, and we also got second bolt in hand for zero. Into a into an over into a big overdraft play. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's that's why the matchup is like twelve percent for the boost because you you clear the board, you do everything, and then they just hit you for twenty. Yeah. It's like, oh. Oh well. All right. So a solid oh. win for Shu on the. Well, yeah, a win for Shu. I I guess say a pretty solid win on the quest shaman for Shu. Um. Now yeah. we. And uh, now he has... Oop, I think I have this on the wrong map. So seeing that quest priest, my guess is Lefty is going after this paladin. Because that's really one of the, the best matchups for quest priest. Is Yeah, I think you're right. So Shu, should prob Shu could probably just come out with the demon hunter here, and uh, it'd be um, uh, probably not too bad for him to win. I mean, if the priest comes out again, then maybe also the demon hunter has issues depending on the version. Um, I I be I I know that Shu is probably primarily a fell DH gamer, but I, like if yeah. the match, but I figure he could probably play D Death Rattle if he thinks it it's going to be pretty good. But seeing as he might have, he might have guessed aggro priest, and it's not. Maybe he also went for fell to also go after the priest in that capacity we'll see now we have the queue for the players and lefty decided to run it back to the priest and it's going to be death rattle demon hunter interesting so maybe predicting this slower priest bring and opting for the, the death rattle demon hunter yeah i really like that uh i really like this bring 
because death rattle demon hunter just is extremely well into priest in general it might even be pretty good into aggro shadow priest like i i don't i haven't played this i have barely played that, that matchup personally but um i imagine just the amount of extra minions that it summons um it can deal really well with the one three and pretty much everything and like everything else especially the newer iterations but this is obviously quest priest so we're so this deck will generally do pretty well into the into the priest here yeah i think a lot of it comes down to sort of the the priests have cut a lot of their you know early clears and stuff in favor of playing these sort of clunky minion packages to let them get the quest complete and that hurts a lot against this death rattle demon hunter because you just don't have that early board contesting yeah. as much as you used to for sure uh this is a pretty decent starting hand though for the priest we've got two drops and three drops to play at, that will contest the board from the demon hunter mm-hmm I think seeing the Razor Boar, I'd like to coin out this 3-4, just because it can test a lot better than the 1-3. Um, I also think a, I would have liked to have seen that. This is a tough choice between the... I think both are very valid picks. Holy Nova... Probably the better pick, given the information Lefty has. Each star, a foe uh, with the Vanguard coming out, though, I think we're kind of wishing we had the power to clear it off. Mm -hmm. And buff our minion, as opposed to now we have to coin Holy Nova, and then we don't get buff on our minion. Uh, but I do think we have to coin Holy Nova. Yeah, you you have to hold it over this board. You can't keep letting that two two survive. It like it, it essentially has soft taunt because of how good it is as a, as an early game minion. Um, mm -hmm. With this, we will get to see, um, we'll get to see the Urzel Giant drop to costing uh, nine instead of thirteen. Don't know why we attacked first. Oh like, yeah, because of the potential pull. Kind of get punished here because yeah. we really wanted to trade into that imp agreed um, and we get a dr okay bite okay he picks he picks the sigil runner because the skull would have gotten really stuck in this hand yeah that's why I, I wasn't super sure about that studies play either just because the best card skull does get stuck yeah i like, I understand why it was done, because there wasn't a whole lot, but I think even just flanking maneuvering to set up, just flanking maneuver to put a 4-1 on board and then push 4 damage is extremely strong. And Priest, pending another clear card, would definitely, like, you know, struggle into that type of thing, and it would almost, it could almost just be, you know, kind of backbreaking a bit. Um, I like Shard here. Shard seems good. Shard's good. You don't have to play rattles. it right... Yep. It's good into a de specifically a death rattle deck. Um, doesn't need it now. Could potentially trade it. Um, but we do have entrap sorceress. Yeah. Why? <laughs> why would we trade it when we could play a three drop and then discover a card? True. Deck? Definitely. Up with somewhere to go. Playing the sorceress. Um, Apotheosis and void shard are both pretty appealing. Uh, they're. Got it. Apo they're makes, both healing. Apo still void makes shard. Me sad. Uh, Apotheosis also, like, it can be really backbreaking for the Demon Hunter just because they often don't want to be trading in your minions, and you sort of force them to. Uh, I wanted to. Yeah, it looks like we were a little slow on the Discover and weren't able to get the trade off that turn, though. Which is kind of rough. Mm -hmm. uh, but we did. We did pick Zyrella that discuss we did pick <laughs> Zyrella and not Zyrella the Devout mm -hmm. there. Gotcha. Which gives us another board clear.
this turns a little awkward just because yeah, I don't know what spells we have in our deck because that definitely affects this. Uh, Gift of the Naru seems like the best option by far here because of its synergy with Zyrella. Definitely. Yeah, but I think I'd also like to play just drop the Entrapped Sorceress as well this turn. Not a huge fan of Soul Mirror here. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a... Oh, wait a minute. I thought that was the other one cost Shadow Spell. Why do they look so similar? Yeah, Call of the Grave, not great. Devour would have been awesome. Mm -hmm. No, it's turn six. Let's play Skull. Yes, that is that top deck. Oh, yup. Oh, top deck Skull, yup. Pretty and, good. And the Kurt. Uh, this is... Each scar, a foe vanquished. So, as bad as this looks for left, he can hero power trade and play Zyrella and get a fire. Um, I think you have to do that, otherwise you're just dead. Uh, yeah, I don't... Yeah. I really don't see another option here. Uh, <laughs> like <we're>, yes. <laughs> we are incredibly dead on board. And now we are not dead on board. Uh, but this Kurt's gonna come down, and we're gonna be very... Uh... Maybe not. I guess we're missing a damage. So we could have hero-powered before playing Kurt. Um... Alright, we have a, uh, a wild, uh, heat shot caster has appeared. Okay. I heard there was right. a I had to join in, I couldn't, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. The good news is we didn't get punished for missing a day because we drew Razor Boar, so we, we played that instead of wasting a mana. But, uh, yeah, there's there's Quest Priest. It seems to be in a pretty rough spot right now. It certainly has its good and bad situations. Yeah. Uh, I, think the, I think the only winning line here is Soul Mirror and pray your opponent doesn't have a minion in hand. Because otherwise we're just very dead on board. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that makes the only, it's the only line here. Maybe you can get one of these heal taunts down. After that, of course, you can't really do that at the moment. Yeah. If you man. theoretically, if you hit a light shower and then play the other light shower, I guess you live. <laughs> um, but it's not, it's not a pleasant situation, right? Yeah. Uh, okay, sheep. Oh. Yeah, it's still just, this still is, this not gonna work. Dead Unfortunately, board. just dead on board. Yeah. Uh, yeah, with hero power. Uh, well, certainly with the yeah, the hero powers alone cause quite the problem. Yep. So this is interesting. Team, so attack once, yeah. Hero power should be enough. I personally would not play shard of the Naru. In quest priest under any circumstances, it was, dis it was oh, discovered. Yeah, we, we discovered. Oh. Okay, okay. Is the but the, I actually cut Korak as well. I think there's some awkwardness in this meta with it, but I don't know. If Korak I, I'm was curious to see more either, of this. Honestly, yeah, I think it. The deck often feels like. There's just a few very clunky spots because you're sort of playing these awkward, proactive cards in a very reactive deck with stuff like Korok. Um, I mean, it's, it depends because sometimes if you if the hand if you get the right cards, you just curve out and quest them on, t on like turn eleven or twelve. If you don't get the curve, you have to play a more defensive game plan with the death rattles and like play for late game. Yeah. So. It looks like we are going to get what I'm assuming is the matchup the Priest wanted to see, which is yeah. this Libra Paladin. I will fight with honor. Yeah, this is quite good. I would keep Pandaren and Hysteria here in the quest, of course. I think um, uh, there are matchups where you throw the quest, but Paladin certainly isn't one of them. I've 
played it a lot. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like with, with decks like Priest, I'm usually hesitant to toss quest just because if you get that first step done, you do just get the card selection from your deck. Uh huh. So it's it feels like unless the, the rest of my opening hand is like all seven and eight drops, if I think I'm gonna get first step done, I'd rather just keep the quest and play it. Um, I think yeah, I think there's some matchups where you just need Zyrella basically on the early game or you're gonna be killed. <laughs> um <laughs> And in that case, like you need to make your mulligan more aggressive. I have things you never knew you wanted. Silence is pretty cool. I like silence yeah, against we, priest. We know it's Libra Paladin, so uh -huh. I want to take a silence. Um, I don't think the other ones are in, in bad by any means, but the silence is such a key part of the matchup. I don't know if there's um, a nameless one or. Vulgen in this list. Those are cards that I play on ladder that are pretty good into this paladin buff situations that happen. I, I have to be honest though. I'm thinking about it and Korak into Psyche Split. Oh yeah, Very that's appealing. pretty cool. I, I think Paladin can kill it. Um but it certainly has a lot of power. If you it's... the concern is you've seen the attendant, so they're they might get ahead ahead on board before you are. And I, I would just be worried that we're going to take too much damage going for that route. Corp is a great pickup here. Wow. You do not want to play this this Tempo Viper. So, <laughs> really helps. Uh -huh. Seems like a fairly straightforward Renew pick. Yeah. It, it's, it's definitely never Call of the Grave. Uh -huh. While well, Rally, I think, is the worst. I, I don't mind Call of the Grave if you need like a key five or six mana play for your curve sometimes you can find them and in late game it's actually pretty insane if you get a proto drake or moarg off of it but yeah I, I don't think we want it on turn four and we need something to use our zarella we don't have a heal if we draw zarella and renew helps set that up as well yeah, so. I, I definitely think renew is like far and away the best option uh-huh uh -huh. This is quite the curve from Paladin, though. We're going to see this 4 or 5 Divine Shield come out next turn as well. Rally. Interesting. Yeah, I think that's a mistake. I don't I, I don't think there's a world where we're not... Like, if you need the quest completion, I, I definitely see the logic there. But we have this Korak next turn, and that's just going to be better. Uh, I don't think we can... Well... You I still just play, play it. It's better than... The Skirpid does nothing here. The... The poisonous body is worse into this board than the the three five is. Yeah, I mean the Korak also just gets traded into by the the devout people, so our, our fancy play of Korak psyche split isn't going to happen. But yeah, I think I think we really should have picked the silence. This was pretty ambitious. Zarella is is an amazing pickup though. That's going to really help stabilize the situation. Yeah. Uh -huh. I think it's it is the like well we didn't pick the renew so like how are we enabling Zyrella? <laughs> well, sure. We have probably I assume that the um there's two renews and two of the the one mana draw threes or deal, heal three and draw a card. Yeah, that we've thing seen, is probably in here. We've seen at least one of both of them, so I would assume that they're both two. Of them. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. You would think after playing 300 games with this deck, I would know the name of every card. Uh, still a work in progress there. I kind of like Coin Light Shower. Yeah, I. It gets punished by. Um, man, I really wanted that Cyrella. But I, I think it gets punished by another buff on this 5 6. I feel like opponent is probably so, uh, sort of telegraphed there's no buffs. Um. So, I think Psyche splitting his minion is so painful because um, there's so many ways it can go wrong, like Barov or another buff, like a Hand of a Doll on this Devout Pupil. And you're kind of you're left with an, an even bigger minion from him. Yeah, lefty disagrees and goes for the Psyche split. Um, it, it doesn't feel terrible, it just doesn't feel great. Yeah, 
This is what can... And the light chart would have felt bad too, right? But at least we yeah. would have gotten some health out of it. So there's six attack on the board. There's no way I'm seeing to make convenient hysteria this turn. Yeah, I don't think. <laughs> what is it? The the way we get hysteria to full clear is we play Viper and then coin hysteria, and I don't think we're ever doing that. It's not a, it's not an insane line. It's really not. Um, the, it feels bad to lose the Viper though. I don't know if he has a backup for that. If you just leave the the um, carry a weapon unchecked, it can become a problem. I don't mind just dropping the light shower here. It aggresses that quest for sure. I I don't like that we're milling a card unless we throw away coin. Why is Thrive in the Shadows in this deck? Uh, to draw a shard when we complete. Oh, this is so bad. You just play the five five on the turn with the the um, quest reward, and you draw it right away. I... We have to just heal ourselves, right? We're not going to float the mana. Come on. I want to trade the. Oh, Viper, we're not. Honestly. Oh, we're floating mana. Oh, I'm, I'm upset. I feel like I. I, I, I think Lefty to is. Trade the Viper, but... Yeah. Either way, I wanted to spend the mana. We don't want the Viper in hand anyway. I, I think we're getting a little bit baited by the um, the quest progression in this game. Like I would have preferred to delay quest and take some more defensive approaches here. We are getting rewarded by the Paladin. Being a not yeah, that was... <laughs> did not want to play anything, I guess. So you can renew his minion and then Hysteria it. I guess we saved the renew for something, right? Yeah. I'd, I'd rather have his minion healed so that it actually clears the board. Or most of it. <laughs> And of ours, good. It's really good here. Yes. Yeah, I've been jamming a ton of Miracle Priest recently, and Devour is like surprisingly useful as a board clear. Oh, for sure. My favorite is against Fel DH. They play all their one ones, and then you eat them. All right. But I like There's... I like the Fel DH late game. It goes to like. They, you don't play minions, so they can't combo, and they have to burn their combo just on the board to try and kill you. All right, we can buff his guy and then eat stuff. Sure. Fine. We want to play our Discover 1-3? No. I think that was slight order as well. I, uh, if we silence the minion first and then yeah no that it. was <laughs> that wasn't quite right i'm also happy with him not just trying to rope but not to discover on a rope yeah we have seen him that's of, yeah that's rope. true that's true i actually really like soul mirror here i don't think it gets much better than this because they, when they start playing divine shields it's, it feels terrible to soul mirror them because it doesn't even get rid of it also, I don't know when else we're fitting in. Like a seven cost, trying to get an eight cost at some point this game. There's probably a Moark in here, right? Yeah, we, we've seen Moark. As well as the Death Knight. As well as. Yeah, Zarela the Devout. Uh, I like odds. I snap pick odds against Paladins usually. It, it's, it's not good against most of the situations, but eventually it's good. Okay. I think Draconic also a valid choice there. I think it's too hard to... Like, this deck plays... I hate Draconic studies in this deck because you're always playing minions and you don't want more minions. Um, you want the removal cards whenever you can get them. Mm -hmm. Are we trading this Viper yet? Or are we going to discover a spell? Just, just rip a death off this Pandaren. Or a Horror would be pretty good. I'd take a Horror. So if we 
if we discover a dragon mm -hmm. that's nine cost and then i don't it, i don't want to play a dragon i'm thinking if we discover <laughs> alex draws i know i know and exactly I alex it. is like the nuts right <laughs> yeah we discover exactly alex here i want to play it <laughs> So yeah. I think we could afford to start. Oh, uh, I, I guess so. you can play Sleepy Dragon and feel happy with yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Right? It's big. It's fat. Seems... It's not hurting you. Yeah. Seems not terrible. Like. All right. I guess we're killing. We're, we're really going for the purified shard game plan this game. And respect to Lefty for sticking with that game plan and not. Uh -oh. oh. 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 Hmm. Yeah, I was just about to compliment them. <laughs> this isn't yeah. too terrible, but I think definitely the eight drop was. I think, I, that, I think was that was. Huge. I think definitely at this point, like full committing to the. Yeah, and now comes the zero cost. We, we floated two mana again. Yeah. So, sh all right, she was gonna trade. And finds the carryo. That's. This is what this is the moment Lefty's been waiting for with this fight. I guess this Viper yeah, has yeah, been waiting all game. Warning. It really has been. I think it's been in, I think it's been enhanced since the first draw, <laughs> or it was mulliganed in. Uh, are we not gonna? Oh, where's the? Ah. I would. Uh, I would so much rather just trade the this two is, one and weapon. This is getting in. destroyed. We managed to find the worst line against Hysteria here. Oh no. Well, not not necessarily. No, you just play the one three. Yeah. And you could go for a Zyrella too, but I think you just play the one three hysteria and then use the weapon. I think that's a pretty good turn. Uh -huh. I mean, if you if you do the Zyrella, I guess I I like the Zyrella more just because Hysteria has some upside against like Divine Shield minions, whereas Zyrella kind of struggles there. I'm going to argue that Zyrella is always good when you've got a heal 5 in your hand, and Hysteria is not. Yeah, I can see it. That's fair. This is fine, though. I I think we've stabilized pretty well. We'll see what this um, Liadrin does, but I don't think there's too many buffs in it. No, there's not a whole lot, I think. There is, there is a hope in there, though, so that's... I'm glad that Shu nece didn't necessarily greed for two hopes. Although maybe you're supposed to do that against um against Priest. I think we could have played the hoop the hope there for sure. Oh, oh we have two Thrive in the Shadows. Um, I guess. I, I'm 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 more annoyed by that. I'm just now noticing that Shu is running Viper in his Paladin into yeah. Druid Priest Shaman. Oh, uh, I'm guessing. It was, I'm guessing. I'm guessing. It's. I'm guessing. It's a. I'm guessing. It's a ladder deck that he never. That he just forgot to change. Oh, these are two good choices here. Shard and Ruin. That's so good. Ruin. I feel. Oh, that's. I. I, uh, I also agree with the Ruin pick. I think Shard's reasonable. You can't play it this turn. You can Wisdom and play mm -hmm. a one three. Yeah, I think the reasoning behind wanting, um. At least for me, wanting ruin is eight eights are you know Naru can make it so that you can hit through them, but I'd rather just kill them even with even if the buffs go back to hand. But uh, full attacks face for lefty, uh, which is a little greedy. Because, oh, exactly. Yeah. I was about to say if we have rush, we can kill this taunt and we're getting hit in the face. And that's a full clear of the board by Samuro. I think we could have just played the hero power and hit the Samuro that way. Yeah. I think it was a bit iffy for that to hit exactly Samuro, but I agree that that could have definitely been a line. And Darren, see, I, I think we need we haven't been taking enough reactive cards. I think I think trading the shard. I think you should trade shard to start. We can't trade the shard. Really? No, I think the we hand have to play all... Pindarin. Okay, yeah, Pindarin. You have to Pindarin and find something that's playable. Like now, 
to hopefully get the quest because we're sitting with that one last thing. If you really need to get this quest against the paladin, or it's gonna kill you. Well, <laughs> we really need to not die exactly. on board. Is step one. True. Uh, I think when I've played this matchup, I usually win incidentally with the quest okay. reward rather gotcha. than the quest reward winning me the game. Gotcha. Like it, it, usually, I've played the quest reward when I've clearly run them out of resources and they have nothing to do. Gotcha. See, this is where Zyrella is good, right? Oh, okay, we got the we got the big guy. Yeah, that's safe. It should, we're we're not gonna die if we play him. Big guy seems so you always okay. play him. You could go like big guy, and even if you want a shard here to make it so that they're not these minions aren't big, you could do that. You could. I don't mind shard. I, don't, I think we're gonna rope out playing shard, shard here. Yeah. Yeah. I... The, the rope has definitely been very concerning for me. It's it's, it's really messed with him. He's missed so many um, lines. Uh, like, I think we'd be at, like, 21 if we had just used our mana every turn. And now Shu gets to hit this for free and then go full face. So it's looking good for this Paladin right now, unless it's, like... Nah, this wow. Hysteria's going to get if him. We, yeah, oh, okay. if we go hysteria. Shrine plus Hysteria next turn, we can get... Gotcha. We get exactly a full clear if we just go shard and then hysteria on the eight eight, right? Okay. Wow, that that's seems... actually that's yeah, actually we, a really we go good spot. Shard hysteria Zyra. That seems really yeah. really strong. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, Lefty can spot it. He might just play the hysteria first on the the big guy, but if you count it up, it works pretty cleanly here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I will tell you, I would not I have spotted that right away, but I but right. I think I think Lefty's found nice. it. Now we played the shard. We played the top deck hysteria. Of course. And then the you Zarella, know, the we've Sanctify. got five mana. I think we definitely drop this then. Yeah. So the the out for Shu here is top deck Mr. Smite, and that's just lethal. No, we have a seven seven taunt. Oh, <laughs> it's not it's going taunt. anywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we have we have um Thrive Light Shower next turn as well. So I, I think this is this is game set. Ooh, Varian. I don't even know if there's a rusher left in deck. There is. There's Cariel Roam. Yeah, Cariel. Wow, four mana Cariel. Coming in clutch to give the... It does only draw two. Yeah. Um, to give the, uh, the rush. I feel like we have... We probably have... I think you play Thrive here and just deck. get the reward and then play the Light Shower. And not overthink things. Wait. <laughs> Wait, so Cariel so Cariel gave both Divine Shield and Yeah, right. if, you draw, if you draw something with both, it gives Oh, there is one oh. spell in our deck. Oh <laughs> Yeah, and then we just it's... hero power our face. Yeah. Uh, you can buff the taunt too. It's actually lines up pretty well. It doesn't matter. You're not you can't die. Yeah, don't, it's don't not possible. It. Yeah. Uh, yeah, not even smite top deck, because there's too many minions. I guess it, it would be a battle master lethal or something, oh, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, I guess. But... Cra it'd have to be something crazy like that. Yeah. It's... Like, carryal, carryal smite, or carryal, carryal battle master might be lethal, because you swing twice, yeah. and then you swing the the buffed Fifth. smite twice. Fifth. But that's, it's super weird to see that happen. Or, uh, no, that's only, like, the carryal battle master, I think, is only 16, if we buff Varian to 8 attack. And we go up to 17 with the light shower dying. Yeah. I mean, Shu, yeah, so. Shu does have a setup to, like, mm -hmm. to get their next turn. But he's not going to have a next turn because yeah. Purified Shard's sitting in All hand. right. I think Lefty could spot lethal here. Mm -hmm. Let's... Yeah, that's... Well done. GG. GG. I think the Molar top deck was a pretty critical moment there. Because if we, we didn't find that, things could have dragged out in a unfortunate way yeah i think without but, the morgue top deck we got really really punished for the the circus amalgam pick i think we also talked about quest priests plays the whole time the whole time and nothing about what paladin did but i think uh, everything paladin did mostly made logical sense yeah and, pal listen, the, <laughs> the paladin hands were very much the paladin hands kind of have one play <laughs> right yeah. whereas the priest hand there's usually a lot of I, to be made I think the Liadrin, I mean, maybe the Liadrin turn could have been different. I think we we looked at, but yeah, you're right. Generally, um, generally it looked pretty good for, uh, so, there was way more lines to think about mm -hmm. in the other game from the other side. I was going to say, I 
feel I was expecting a bull nur shaman here because I think it's I was as well. Good I think it's better actually better. better. Yeah, Quest I think the fact that fine into Libram, I thought. No, it, it's good. I, I think Bolner Shaman really messes with it because mm -hmm. there's yeah. just so many ways that Paladin just never hits you with minions. And if you can't hit with minions, you can't win with Paladin. It's so tilting. Um, it's so it tilting. Is, the addition of Smite to the deck makes it a little harder for the Shaman, but it's it's still very very Shaman. I think Shaman reliably kills you on turn like 10 or 11, and Cariel does not have time to make Smite that big. Mm -hmm. I, I, at least I don't think. I don't, I don't think I've seen... I, I know the idea of the premise behind Smite, but I've never seen it actually <laughs> I've, effective in play. <laughs> I've hit for 14 with Smite before. It was fun. In what matchup? <laughs> oh, I, I don't even know. It was a ladder game. Uh-huh. Yeah. But, but, I mean, I I but I got lucky where Smite was my only minion in hand for two turns. Okay, yeah. I was just thinking, I've played that with Quest Priest a lot, and I've never been concerned. Gotcha. Yeah, it wasn't into, It definitely wasn't into Quest Priest. I, I know I did have a ladder game where I was playing my good old Control Warrior, and that opponent just played 40 attack smite and hits me with it. Uh -huh. <laughs> that, was, that was not ideal. <laughs> I, I would think yeah. that would be the matchup where smite is at its best. For sure. All right, so in this matchup, we have Hand of a Doll. We have a pretty good early hand for Shu, and a decent, also a pretty decent start for Lefty as well. Especially with that Serpent Shrine. Serpent Shrine I would actually argue up. this is pretty much the perfect hand from yes, I agree. Shibaka. Yeah, <laughs> it looks like it. I feel oh. like we needed to coin the Sherp Serpent Shrine or we're going to fall too far behind here. As awkward as it is with the curve, I think yeah. we need to do it. Yeah, I, because if he, I, if he lands another I buff... Agree. Noble Mount is just so punishing for um, the sort of damage-based removal that Sean... Right, if you go for Feral Spirit and you get Noble Mounted here, it's backbreaking. Yeah. And even just like a plus one, plus one buff... Okay, we would just it. make it trade too well with the feral spirits. Mm -hmm. Kind of an underwhelming three drop. <laughs> yeah. True strength comes from the pit. Well, this was disaster averted, I would say. Yeah. Huh. Now the question is, do we button pass or play zapper? I think you play the zapper. You could do it next turn too, but I, I like contesting the board a little bit. It's hard call. I don't think you're too thrilled to see double charged call this early in the game. Yeah. I feel like this paladin hand just keeps getting better. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 something. Perpetual flame would be the nuts here. It's probably in the deck, right? I would hope so. Uh, I think we yeah, we sort of just forced to go for feral spirit though. I I don't think it's too sad to play feral spirit. It lines up reasonably well here. The 2-4 can't kill it. And it takes off the Divine Shield. Now Shu has the option to either play Truth Seeker or Devout Pupil. I mean, see what we draw, but... I think it'll be the Truth Seeker with this curve, because you can play, yeah, Hope on 6. Definitely. Canal Slugger, I guess? Yeah, I mean, we can... In theory, we can clear everything but the, the Noble Mount minion if we wanted to. Mm -hmm. Really know if we want to do that line. I still like trading the Zapper into this 5-3 because it's, it's yeah, kind of a yeah. big threat to take off the board. Yeah, it's the... The full clear is we overdraft the 2-4 and then trade the 2-3 into it, and I don't think that feels particularly good. But getting rid of divine thing. shields is useful. Actually, I, I don't. I don't think we want to play the overdraft. That feels weird to me. I think we either trade it or hold on to it for a more impactful situation. Mm -hmm. You could overdraft the two four and bump the two three into it. 
and trade the 5-3, that would take the most power out of play. Yeah, it doesn't feel particularly great to use Overdraft, because they still have the Libra and they can just put it on the Divine Shield minion. I think the reasoning is you can Feral Spirit and Charge Call next turn if you do this. Actually, I think this is... This is, like, particularly disastrous because it lets them play the Devout people as well this turn. Whereas yeah, the, well, the I don't... The wasn't dead. It's a hard thing to think about. Mm -hmm. Those particular breakpoints, unless you're tracking very, very carefully. So I don't necessarily blame him here for that fault. It's like Sea Giant math. Like, people talk about Sea Giant math, but I think most of the time they don't actually do it. Yeah. Uh... I think you just feral. You committed to feral spirit charge call last turn, so I think you just look at what you can get. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to be dead here. It's bad, but you're not going to be dead. Sometimes I like will actually just go pull up the carry to see if five or six drop is better. It's like between like six and seven drop usually, but sevens are bad. Sixes five. are pretty good. Yeah, six is better than five. Six is better than seven, and eights mm -hmm. are better than nine. I think 9 is underrated. I think it's better than people think. Uh, I think 8, with the addition of uh, the Abominable Lieutenant, is it? I think 8 got a lot better. Well, it did, but that's just one minion. Yeah. I mean, you've seen, you've seen the Pheno 8s, right? Like, yes. <laughs> there, there's some bad ones out there. I think 9s are less... That happens a little less. Yeah, but, but I, with the, dis the ability to discover them, it's different than... If you're just getting a random one, this is dragon, right? Yeah, you dragon just take the, this so is the best better. minion. I'm going to check my um, my stats stats thing real quick and see if nines, eights or nines are better. Man, what this paladin hand was insane. Yeah, the like, <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? I don't know like how you beat this paladin curve. I, I think Free Shaman might have pulled it off if you can just yeah. keep freezing the stuff, but yeah, like, the, the you can't play fair thing. against this. It's too much. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Oh, this is nutty. We may actually pull this out. I, I don't think we can get to Brucon, is the unfortunate thing. Unless this hits an over Lightning Bloom here. Oh, it's not a Lightning Bloom. What's the out here? Like, I think if you hit if you hit lightning bloom, you could like, um, well, I'm just trying lightning, to figure out uh, how do we how do we stop ourselves from dying? Like, what, lightning what's the bolt, line that we aren't dead? You, you got to find a, a really good nine drop, right? Like a sleepy dragon. I don't think you're dead if you get a sleepy dragon. Looks like is gonna go for a nine drop. We we definitely have to play this charge call so that we're not uh, dying here. Well, do we actually? No, you have to play the charge call. There's I, I, I there's no way you don't. We don't, right? we don't have to, but I feel like we should have because now we're dead. Well, I don't know what we're waiting on. Even if you get an overload card next turn, unless it's overdraft, you can't play the charge call twice. Yeah, yeah, it needed to be bloom. Play charge call twice, I guess. I don't know. The it's a hard spot though because it feels like we're just playing our value cards as just trying to like stop ourselves from bleeding out so quickly. Could have um, runaway blackwing there too. I don't know if that would have that might have worked. It, it, I think it would have. Sleepy Dragon and Runaway Blackwing. Yeah. Uh, I guess if we, if we got Carnival Clown, we're not dead. Well, yeah, I don't, that's a painful one to, to pick yeah, up. You, you, never, you never pick that one. <laughs> eight mana. So I guess the, the worst eight mana is Supreme Abyssal. That you can pick up. Maybe we're supposed to go for eight. Because you could have gotten Alec here. Maybe that was an out. 
Because the divine shields were a problem there. But yeah, well played. Um, well played by Shu. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. That paladin just steamrolled. Yep. Uh, I called Shu. Hello, Mister Shu. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, well done. I didn't get to catch the beginning of your series, but I uh, I made it for the end and got to see the paladin domination in that last game. What were your thoughts with um, Paladin going into this series? Did you expect the Priest and Shaman to necessarily do what they did? Or did, what were you thinking there? I didn't think he'd be Quest uh, Priest. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's Priest, so it's one of three decks. But I knew Paladin was unfair into that. Paladin was pretty good into the rest. I didn't expect him to bring Quest Shaman also. I thought that was pretty funny. I was expecting some sort of freeze, either OTK or freeze or something. Yeah, I think the freezes would have managed that end game situation a little better, as oppressive as it was. But um, yeah, well done with that. I, I think that I didn't get to see too many exciting lines from you in the last two games because it was pretty straightforward paladin gameplay. But I don't know how did the first um, first two games go for you? Uh, first game was my shaman versus his priest. I took a really ballsy play after the quest reward, got lucky, and ended up just brutalizing it. That mm -hmm. uh, was game two. The game two was Demon Hunter versus Priest. I was DRDH. Um, I think it was also pretty straightforward. He stalled. He tried to stall with a piss elemental, and <laughs> really mm -hmm. couldn't do much else. Yeah, I, I I have to say I think the death of that old Demon Hunter ring was very interesting for me just because uh it felt like fell would have been a lot better into like most potential shamans and an aggro priest bring so what was the thinking behind death rattle instead i wanted to do fell demon hunter and i wanted to do some sort of free shaman but i threw it into like a really bad matrix like 20 minutes before my match would go oh Bell Demon Hunter has like a forty nine percent win rate across the board, but DRDH has like a fifty six. So like, all right, that's convincing enough to me. I'm not good at math, but that's like a seven percent higher. I'll I'll switch. I think um I think Fell Demon Hunter versus Priest is very weird. Like I think if you play Priest perfectly, it's super favored, and if you mess up at all, you'll die. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't. Know. It would have been it would have been really hard to pilot that Priest right. Priest is hard to definitely hard to pilot, especially that matchup. Yeah, I mean, Fell Demon Hunter is also really hard to pilot. It is. It is. Those more intricate matchups, you know, like really, the... we watch Ted pilot it all the time. He does fine. Yeah, I got it's... hit with the. I was playing Priest on ladder against that deck, and I got hit with the Death Knight into the full combo on like turn turn eight. Like he didn't even have the Death Knight, but he, he got all three. He got, um, he got the the hero card. He got the performers and he got the two three from his skull and i got comboed out of nowhere um so it can, it can do some nasty things sometimes if you plan ahead for it yeah i remember against my game in shark bait or against shark bait uh, i want to say two weeks ago i got uh, both of the expendables off of skull so they were like really cheap on turn 10 i just played both of them with the dead eye and just had an absurd amount of damage mm -hmm. so that deck definitely can pop off yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I would say overall, I think fairly, fairly well piloted. There were maybe like one or two lines I slightly disagreed with, slight yeah. order things, but I mean, <laughs> yeah, Paladin... I definitely play fast. I don't, I don't like to think, so my order does normally, well, sometimes gets messed up. I think Lefty really struggled with his time management. We saw some. Floated hero powers and um, suboptimal discoveries. I think in the priest versus paladin game, I th like I think putting the pressure on him with time actually was was pretty useful there. Because sometimes if you don't give them time on your turn, then they're maybe not as prepared. So that was pretty good. Yeah, I mean, obviously missed an attack or two throughout the series. So I don't know if it was mm -hmm. time management or connection or what it was. Yeah, yeah. Definitely oh, uh, one of the things with decks like Quest Priest and sort of other control decks is it's really hard to, if you're not experienced with it, to bring it. Um, just because, like, you know, you start your turn and you have, like, seven green cards in hand. 
that was yeah. going to play. Yeah, for sure. It's there's a lot of things to go through, and um, I think you have to kind of decide if you need reactive or proactive tools and quest completion versus just surviving. Um, silence versus aggression. That was a hard pick too. Um, I did want to ask though. I think you had a viper in the paladin deck, and I was told that there were no weapon classes from I, your I opponent. Was that an accident, or was there something I missed? I just forgot to take it out, and I didn't really realize. It was like, uh-huh. oh, it's whatever. It's cycling. It's good enough for me. One mana draw one. There you go. Yeah, it's cycle. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks again for, for coming on stream. Congrats for winning. And mm-hmm. I think we, we need to get headed into our next match now. The players are ready. Indeed. All right. Have a good one, guys. See you around. Thanks. Yeah. See ya. All right, so thanks to Lefty and Shu for playing on stream, and let's transition over into our next match. We got Hero Series 1, Seed Action, always just in time versus Based Inc. We have uh, Demon Hunter, Rogue, Mage. I'm uh, sorry, Demon Hunter, Hunter, Mage, and Rogue. And we have Demon Hunter, Druid, and Rogue, and Shaman for base. But they saw Rogue, they banned Rogue. Right, it's, it's not often that it gets left up with the exceptional power of that class right now yeah. um there's probably some some lineups that could do it but you'd have to be very unusual <laughs> yeah i don't know my opponents uh, there, did ban it last week and it was pretty good for me there is a lineup out there that beats rogue i think it's just some, some very bad decks and you have to guess the rogue type correctly right i think if you miss the rogue type there's no deck that beats both rogues no no lineup that beats both rogues certainly Um, but yeah, Hunter and Mage from Justin versus the Druid and Shaman from Based. This Mage is potentially frightening, I think, for for Based. I think she's going to have to have a good plan for dealing with it. Um, and I think the the Hunter maybe so we might see like more Fell kind of controlling yeah. Demon Hunter from Based in this situation. I don't know, actually. Um. I I think I, I would expect brute demon hunter from base, just because of the mage. Uh, yeah, the mage and the demon hunter. Well, I think you have to deal with this hunter, or it's going to beat you up. Unless you have like a very like a, yeah. a ta- classic taunt druid, no beasts. Yeah, my game thinking package. is if we bring, um, like druid, just well, I guess it's it's the question of like, do you want druid to be the counter to? demon hunter or do you want your demon hunter to be the counter there if you bring a slower druid you can beat demon hunter but if you bring like the faster aggro druid you can then hunt her with yeah it, it does feel like base got kind of sandwiched here between the mage and the hunter um on the anti-control and um aggression fronts and it's hard to it's going to be really hard to see if she, if she can walk that line and navigate in between them to beat both it's yeah. Like game one, we're gonna see Shaman versus Hunter. Ooh. And uh this doesn't look like Face Hunter. I believe Justin told me he dropped a twelve hundred dust for the stream's enjoyment. Oh, that's wonderful. I Justin is a player that is very happy to go off the rails with his, his deck building, and I, I always enjoy it. watching him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I feel like base is the most opposite. She always brings the most clean possible ladder decks to any yeah. any, any tournament. So a clash of philosophies here, for sure. Yeah, I, I actually, um, looking at this, I I'm I'm, wouldn't be surprised if this is actually, uh, because of Mage, this could actually be a Doomhammer Shaman. I mean, I, I see cage match, so yeah. I mean, take a guess that we're running. Well, yeah, I, I saw that. Here. That's why I pointed it out, too. <laughs> Mountain Bear could be a problem, then. Um, yeah, this is going to be interesting. Then it has to be a fast win for base, probably. I don't know. Yeah. Now there's the question of do you coin bunker on one? And... I had, a, I had a, um, a rogue play Mountain Bear on turn four against me. <laughs> it's a few, oh, I have to. A few hours ago. And Justin is debating whether he wants to coin this bunker or not. That's not too interesting. Oh, 
Oh man, this granite is gonna be granite on three is a lot of power. Yes. Pack tactics not incredible when you have no minions. Um, yeah, not, not quite this. Well, if we do something like coin teachers pack next turn, it's pretty good. Uh, and if I had to guess, we probably point. Oh my pet. gosh! Yeah, teacher's pet isn't that bad, and we can revive it. But this is a lot of minions, a lot of stats. Yeah. And it is a doom hammer. It's pretty much confirmed with the star strike picked up. Definitely. There's going to be the... the pack tactics looks a little better now for sure, right? <laughs> We have to coin the teacher's pet here, right. otherwise we're pretty much just dead. There's no hexamental here, critically. That would probably just end the game in base's favor, if that was the case. Well, Justin would get a 3-3 frog, and then he would also be able to revive that frog, because it is yeah. a beast, but yeah. That's uh, a combination. Probably an explosive trap happening. Yeah, like explosive traps. I think you probably played both yeah. secrets and you bumped this 4 3 and maybe the 4 2. I want to bump the 4 3 because I don't want it hitting me in the face for like a yeah, bunch. You, you definitely bump the 4 3, but do you bump the 2 3 so that the full board just gets cleared by explosive? Because we can then follow right. it up with Tabish next turn for upgraded explosive if opponent just ends. What turn happens if they the don't? Thing. Yeah, what happens if they don't hit face? That's the question, right? Yeah, well, my thinking is then we just play Tavish and we get upgraded explosive, and then we're doing five to the whole board. Mm hmm. It's, in theory, we're not guaranteed upgraded explosive, but it's like very low. Right. It does make Doomhammer disappointing to, um, to play here with the, the explosive trap. Probably, well, oh, that's an uncharacteristically bad ordering choice. Oh, opting to hold it back. Those. And right, we're seeing it. We have to see the upgraded explosive come in here. Yeah, we, we do kind of need it. Uh, improved ice, ice trap isn't bad. I improved pack, actually. If we're going to be resing, uh, yeah, actually. Okay. If we're resing, um, what's its name next turn? Mm -hmm. Teacher's pet. This one has to be improved explosive, though. Right, the only thing is um, Rockbiter is lethal. Uh, no, because we have the normal oh, the... Right, no, and, and the armor. So it's yeah. no longer a problem. Justin is in, like, a surprisingly decent position. <laughs> well, up until... I think the Lilypad Lurker is going to make our bear very sad. Yeah. But hey, we still get two times. Job's done. I wonder if you just play the guardian animals. Well, we only have seven mana, so it'd be hard to do. Yeah. Yeah, not this turn, but... I'm, I'm looking at this turn 8, and there's a lot of options. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Jewel will resurrect two teacher's pets. Oh. Right, Stormstrike means that uh, it doesn't even matter that we have this upgraded pack tactics. Yeah. 
now Justin on death's door with no healing likely in his deck. Yeah, well, as long as we keep these taunts going, we this uh, isn't good die enough. To Fireheart, anyways. I feel like you just rip the Fireheart here. You know. Mm hmm. No, I don't think I'll do it. Wow. And an unfortunate loss for the Hunter, I think. I'm not sure if this is the Hunter deck of choice. I'm not sure how the Elemental Doomhammer Shaman is going to be dealt with effectively. Mizaki Mage isn't terrible, and De Demon Hunter isn't terrible. Yeah, I mean, Fell Demon Hunter with the one Viper that's pretty standard and less is quite good in the Aggro Elemental Shaman. Yeah, I, I guess you're right. It probably depends on the Viper to deal with the Doomhammer. If the Doomhammer is left up, the minion pressure into it may lead to a, a victory for based. But if it's the Doomhammer is dealt with, I think that the Demon Hunter will stabilize. And the like, the current iterations of uh, with Kurtris are a lot better at the game than the older versions, where you're sort of basically just relying on drawing Jace to win a lot of the aggro matchups. Right, well the old version could only even do 18 with the Ilganoth. And it required use of your healing cards to kill them. Which is no longer the case. Now you can use your healing cards to heal and remove the board. Which are great. Yeah, this also seems like a pretty bad starting hand. <laughs> if we draw a cage match, we're not unhappy. But if we don't draw a cage match here, we're really unhappy. Wow, this is sad. This is not the the shaman start you want to see ever. Yeah. Now, do you kill the totem or do you go face? I would, like, go face every time here. But Justin seems to be thinking. No, I would kill the totem every time. You want to you want to go face? Yeah. This thing um this thing buffs the minions and I don't I don't want their minions to have more attack. That seems like a huge annoyance. Plus, yeah, like Mag Darrod on board space sometimes matters. So. Yeah, my thinking is like usually with Demon Hunter, you we have like an Immo War in hand. I feel like against yeah. aggro decks, there's no such thing as close lethals with Demon Hunter. Like, either you, you stabilize or you don't. You don't sneak by with a tiny little bit of extra damage most of the time. Yeah, that's definitely fair. I mean, always, there's always exceptions to any rules, but... I think it's an Aldrachi. This is my preferred line here, but... <laughs> The the coin four three isn't bad. Yeah, I I want to coin the four three. Um, you know, I think I'm, that makes not... a lot of sense. It's not dealt with effectively on this board, right? Yeah, you have to I'm you have to hit cool. something into it. Quite as proficient with like the this expansion spell demon, but um, Felgorger was like one of the best Mulligan win rate cards against aggro, just because. You're usually drawing a useful piece as well as getting uh, a body that contests fairly well against most decks. I think the um, the problem, obviously he didn't have it, but what I was kind of thinking is the um, the three mana elemental that deals three mm -hmm. probably doesn't probably doesn't line up well. Felgrader probably doesn't line up well into that. You just saw him activate the elemental, which he didn't want to play on turn three, so. That's kind of where my head's at. But. Now we have Aldrachi or Immolation Aura as options. Mm -hmm. Two Immolation Auras, you could probably afford to use one if you wanted. Yeah, I think the other consideration is it's often better to greed Aldrachi. Uh, I know, like, especially against Hunter and probably somewhat against Doomhammer Shaman as well. Uh, your opponent will try and just deny healing by not playing minions, and if you save Eldrachi and some weapon buff, the way to get around that. Uh, Dustin is, disagrees with both of us. I, I think this is a smart play. 
I, I yeah, you can I afford like to this. take the damage. We're at thirty. <laughs> yeah, I. Twelve, twelve is a really good club. The only punish would have been hexamental on your one three. Then uh, this would never trigger. Only enemy minions, isn't it? Is it only enemies? You can't. You can't taunt yourself. Fairly certain. It's only enemies. I haven't. I do not play this deck at all. So you could be right. I'm a poor judge. Looking it up right. Yes, it's only yep. enemies. You're correct. So there's no there's no downside to playing the mag. Uh, the downside is that your opponent breaker connect very often, but that's not like a huge downside. Uh, right. Well, you can just mo fell scream and hero power the one three, and then you get a twelve twelve out of the deal. I. Sure, you could also Chaos Strike instead of Hero Power and draw the card. Get the card. Oh, if he'd waited, he would have gotten that off the top next turn. <laughs> oh man, punished for <laughs> he, a he card that he didn't know was there. there. <laughs> I think he sees the Emulation or Fell Scream, right? Unless he's yeah. trying to... It seems kind of crazy to greet it harder than that. Yeah. I mean, I think... Respect for taking your time, though. Okay, I think that's that's a good thing to do. But I, I don't mind this what? line. Um, I, I guess like less show against a shaman, but it it's often very powerful to like leave leave up warders in a position where you can easily kill. Because this feels like it was too fancy, and we took damage for we took we took four damage for no reason here, and we missed twelve. <laughs> yeah, I think it's like if our opponent was playing like this. Line, and now you don't get to play your skull on turn six because we have to kill his minions now. Hey, we could just die to double rock biter next turn instead and play the skull. It's, a, it's an option. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, this is bad. Maybe he's up to skull for Viper. If he has Viper, maybe that's his out, right? Maybe that's better than killing the minions. It doesn't make up for the fact that we got too fancy here, and this was really bad. Yeah, I think killing the minions is better here, because we go up to 18, and like, 16 health is a pretty important breakpoint against Doomhammer Shaman. I think the I think there could be an argument made for the fact that you inevitably die if you don't use this weapon. Well, we, we also go Aldrachi Fury Hero Power no, it, it obviously buys your turn. My concern is long term; it may not may not get there. Yeah, well, I think if we had this mech there on last turn, we would have a bit more of a clock. As we well. would have a lethal setup, is what we'd have. Yeah. What? Uh -huh. Man, Justin plays so greedy. Oh my gosh, he's insane. <laughs> Yeah, it wouldn't have actually been a two-turn lethal from Justin because of the freeze, but I still would have liked to see him try. Also, Justin's taking 16 this turn, so we need fell. We need to hit. We need a man us. That's yeah, we're that's not here. that's not enough. Because we heal for six, and then we take 16, and we're dead. Yeah, I mean, the the mag there online felt like, as you were saying, just too fancy. Um, we're not playing against a deck that plays big minions. We're playing against a deck that burns us over the top. I mean, I understand his thought process. He's saying that he would have played Doomhammer before if he had it, because obviously it was bad to play minions into the mag. But I don't know. Disappointing. I'm sure, I'm sure Justin's frustrated, right? Because he did, was off the top to get the Doomhammer. Yeah. Uh, but it was... Was it turn six? Yeah, it was turn six. Although... 
was there granite played that game? No, not that game. No, it yes, it wasn't granite. granite. So yeah, yeah, cage match. Cage match uh, wouldn't have found the weapon that turn. That. Yeah, I think. I don't know if Justin wins with the better mech there online, but like we also didn't lose that turn, so it gave us a lot more options. Yeah. We have to play the Zaki Mage into Doomhammer Shaman, which is not as bad for the Mage as HS Replay would make it seem, but still not a great spot. This is a powerful curve from base. She's going to be hitting this Mizaki hard and fast. And there's no discount mana stuff in hand. There's no flow. Uh, nothing. This is kind of spooky. So this might be a 3-0 just from this crazy Doomhammer Shaman bring. And that turn 2-2-5 two, two, with win hard to argue with. <laughs> we primordial stuff. Uh, that one is nice. Yeah. I don't think it's... It's never a when and... Thalnos seems like a better G answer in this situation. Well, yeah, you want the card. We gotta find our flow. We can play it here and look for flow. Yeah. Runs out on me. I wonder if Justin has Ice Barrier in his mage. I would assume not, because there's no rogue left up. I would think so. It's... It, usually, it's, it's like kind of one of those flex cards on ladder that you usually play for, me, for um, weapon rogues. Uh... I mean, I've seen it in more as, like, anti-Fell um, Demon Hunter, and also, I guess, sort of, incidentally, anti-Doomhammer Shaman. But, I don't know, my right. experience is that, like, the Weapon Rogue matchup is just so miserable that it's like, yeah, you can make it, like, a 17% instead of an 11% with an Ice Barrier. Yeah, that's a fair point. But stuff like Fell Demon Hunter, Shaman, mm -hmm. where you're a turn off, usually different story. No, Starting to get bad. I think we have to... Oh, we're not going to coin the draw. Okay, another Thanos. Not bad. We can kill... We can do some first flaming. Yeah, we can... We can full clear with first flame, which seems mm -hmm. good. Without Doomhammer, it's going to be tough for Shaman to kill Mage for four combo, I think. Yeah, it's really like minimizing this mage for the Mage, just because the the Doomhammer itself tends to take a lot. Biscuit Freeze? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking as well. We've played you can, you, you, can, you can take the six, but I don't want to. Yeah, it's, it's like we can take the six, but there's no reason. Right. And it also feels like if your pinging doesn't change many break points. No, yeah, I certainly want the mana. Mana is good. Mana lets us do things. I kind of wonder about this Snowfall Guardian. It seems terrible in this deck. Yeah, I don't. I've, I keep looking. We looked at it three games now, and it seems bad all three games. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think, like, what what deck would Justin have brought that Snowfall would have been good against? And it 
I just can't think of more. You're gonna go Boulder Fireheart. Uh, I like this three mana five six. I, I do want to play that. We can turn two enemy minions. Oh yeah, that's what we needed, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think we start with the refreshing, right? Uh, we're playing either. Monster you could or play um, or both. You could play multicaster. Yeah. I would guess it, it would be like a multicaster play. Oh, there's flow. I was gonna say ping plus flurry. Also flow. It's a little awkward because you wanted to freeze the five six, but maybe just well, play flurry anyway. Yeah, just just don't miss. Yeah, there you go. I mean, are we ever dead here? I feel like we're not ever dead here. If they're not, yeah. if we know they don't doomhammer, probably not. Yeah, we could consider like saving the flurry for extra spell damage. Probably a little greedy. Mm hmm. Um, Never be afraid of your inner power. Now we have Fireheart plus Bulner. We oh, wait, that draws a Doomhammer, right? Yeah, because we've played both Sloggers, if I remember correctly. We guaranteed Doom Ooh, Hammer, Frostbite. Frostbite. That's so good. We can use that on the 3 4. So, Fire Sail, or it needs to be. Happening probably. <laughs> oh, and we found it. <laughs> Ask and you shall receive. Yeah. Uh, what is it? Fire sale, ping, coin, siphon, mana. I like that. Yeah. Looking at. I think we give up the. We're happy to give up a coin in exchange for this hand being discounted. Yeah. Plus five health. Five health is cool. Justin. Point for Justin's. AI. I found a brain freeze. So Not bad. I don't know if we brain freeze. You're I thinking think... Mazaki draw considerations? Yeah, I'm think well, I'm thinking we could like Mazaki and then we can do like uh what would it be coin, siphon, or something similar. I'm gonna counterpoint and say that I don't think Justin has lethal here. Even with the flow, I don't think he's got enough mana. Next turn, I think he wants two turns. I think. <laughs> I think you always play the brain freeze here. Okay. Because you might get an extra turn out of it. I don't. I don't necessarily know if I agree with Justin for having. I feel like we have a, we have a flow. We have a flowed deck. We have both biscuits in hand. I think that our worlds. Were... Yeah. He's going for it. Okay, I don't think you had to. Lethal without it. I don't think. Um, I don't. I don't think you had to play this. Uh, I mean, base has two in hand. Plus, just played the Doomhammer this turn, so you're dead to two. Plus. Um, plus any burn spell. I think you, you don't... Well, then you can't to, play. But... It's not possible to die. Because the, the most you can do is, is double rock better storm strike, and if there's no minions... I guess if you play a one-mana elemental, so... There's would, there's some world. If it's it double... Like double rock biter plus, like, a lightning bolt on fire. There's no lightning bolts in this deck. We've seen the whole deck. Yeah, but we, there's two fire heart. Oh, fire. yeah, okay. The fire heart spell. So you could play around that. Yeah. Well... Oh, we got the honorable kill. Nice. There you go. Discount the hand. Yep. And Justin's still alive. Yeah. Uh... I think he had more damage. I think the, the still having the coin was pretty good. And the, the the mana biscuit, even though it didn't give you mana, was an extra like six damage, right? Yeah, I, I think with the was... with, with the siphon mana line, like your refreshing cost one less, your other. It's good. Mm -hmm. Plus one less netting you mana. I think they're they're probably comparable. Um, but 
yeah, now we we get to see some more Mizaki gameplay. And ooh. I think Druid is not. I don't know of any Druid archetype that I'm upset to see with Mizaki Mage. Yeah, um, okay, Meatness. Meatness sounds like the Druid archetype I'm upset to see. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, yeah, but I think this is a pretty clear indicator we've got a Fell Demon Hunter and not a Brute Demon Hunter. Yeah. But Well, at least it tells me that the Mutant is probably isn't in the Demon Hunter. <laughs> I think that's what I've learned from that. Uh, I'd, I'd rather play Brute Demon Hunter without me. But mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> I would agree. <laughs> So spammy. I think this deck is a very bad druid deck, personally. Uh, if, if based wins, I'm going to ask her about it because I think it's not. I mean, I guess you can put mutinous in it, right? But I don't think it makes any sense against face hunter. <laughs> yeah, I... Weirdly enough, I feel like I'd rather just run essentially just like old Anna Contra druid with eight mana alignment. I'm trying to beat Mizaki's. Oh yeah, for sure. I'm like you. I'm down you for run that. Double cold tooth, and then you just. I guess don't run scenario. I don't know. That seems a little lost, but oh, flow. There's flow. Flow on four is nice. pretty good. We have to be careful though about the mutinous though. I don't. I don't know if oh, Justin's going to play around it, right? It's it's yeah. hard to make that call to like not play a multicaster. But if we get studies, we don't play the studies minions, right? All right. I see your flow on four. And I'll play mutinous on four. Yeah. <laughs> It is always like when you have these mutinous decks against Mage, you have to like walk this fine line of do I think they have Mozaki in hand or do I need to save the mute? Yeah, it's hard to make that judgment. You just kind of have to look for like when they've played a multicaster, I think is go time. You know, that's probably the best you can get. Or like, ideally, you see them draw a minion off of the. Uh, Yeah. They draw a minion off of the um, the uh, refreshing spring water, and you know that they have a minion. And then you can eat something. Mm -hmm. I, I usually... You know, oh, prime you prime school. Of... You pick Phoenix and not play it and save it for later. Yeah, both. Either way, this is, this is hopefully both Moon is fodder. Options, but... I, I think I feel like I like Phoenix a little more than Prime. Um, I think Prime is better if they play Celestial Alignment because you can get a um, yeah, some cheese there. Fair. I don't know. My thing is like there. There's world where your Zaki gets eaten, and then you're like churning through your deck and playing Ignites and. Phoenix can help you with that. Buddies. Man, this Venus is going to miss if we keep getting minions. No, he, he just wants stuff. the ramp. That makes more sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the... <laughs> oh, well. Uh, this the, feels the too early. Wow. Yeah, I too... feel like knowing there's the studies minion in hand definitely makes that... It makes it not... Like, you want to wait, right? That's a big deal that that missed. That might be the game. <laughs> well, I mean, we there's a lot of this whole druid deck. We're, yeah, we're going to get another 16 armor and we're going to get another 6 from Moon Touched Amulet. So there's a lot of, there is a lot of armor gain left in this. And it might be too much. We'll see. I I don't know if we're as concerned about the armor gain as like some other form of disruption. What other form would there be? Uh, like a some, yeah, I mean something off of resizing patches. Yes, look for you could resizing the other meanness this turn, yeah. Yeah, or if we you probably want to discover an alignment. You would you would probably bloom it. You would you could bloom solar resizing. That might be the move because if you just need to hit the meanness. But you also want to you, you want to get the scenarian words there. more right. I, I think the the scenario here. Makes a lot more sense. Fino eights. Um, so we can. This is. We have a good um, siphon here. 
I you just wait a turn. I think you just wait a turn and you do your you want to make sure you have the damage, so let's siphon this five five and get some cards drawn. Let's play this like AI and stuff, you know? Play yeah, the mana yeah. biscuit. Yeah, play AI, siphon. Seems good. Sure, you can multicaster too. You can do everything. Yeah, I mean we, we wanna draw cards. We wanna just count the cards in our hand. So you want Siphon for face damage? I think it's better to get the discount. That's a tough call, right? Yeah, that's... That's, like, the thing that... I, I don't know, I find I personally struggle with, with, like, the, the current Mazaki deck, is, like, Siphon is... Like, do you use it as a flow? Do you use it as a palm reading? Do you use it as a burn spell? And you have to, you have to make that call. Well... Uh, now they say mutinous. No, they don't. Uh, we can get yeah six six seven taunts seems good, but yeah sure. I think Justin can just go for it this turn. Get it? Yeah, I think I think he's got it. I mean, he don't have to do it though. Is the thing right? I don't he's have going. to, but you, you might as well. Great, an extra damage. Yep. Yeah, now we. Now we play the Siphon, Mana Biscuit, we can refresh Oh, there's it. no minions. Refreshing is going to get mana. Mm -hmm. But we do that at the end, right? That's like, like we want to yeah, we, we we play wanna the cram sessions before the, the um, it's refreshing, yeah. Well, I don't think we can play both cram sessions. We only get to play one, because the second one will draw too much. Um, don't know if we're particularly concerned. Not only getting to play one now, because oh, milling one of our burn spells rough, but we can still just draw ignites that are in our deck. And yeah, that that ignite just hit for fifteen. So now he's dead. Well, yeah, he's dead. Based is dead. That's going to be lethal. Yeah, so it's it's going to yeah. come down to what I'm assuming is fell demon hunter. Mizaki Mage, which I would not want to be in I would not want to be the Demon Hunter. Unless, unless there's a Mutinous in there, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I think Base, Base tried her best. I think she could have thought more about the Mutinous timing. I, I don't know. It's it's tough, right? I, I haven't played this matchup enough to know if the, you can out-armor to... Justin's taking a quick bathroom break, by the way. He messaged me, so we've got a, some downtime before Game 5. But I think it's it's so hard to make that call if you have enough armor, right? I, I really don't think you can reliably out armor because as we saw there, the Mizaki is doing You got so you know, much, yeah. <laughs> like the the Ignite's doing eighteen, we still have a rune door, but we can still draw the other two ignites in our like out armoring Mizaki is just so hard to do because you don't get that many turns to try and do it against a good mm -hmm. yeah i wonder like it maybe if you hit like 60 this is when you kind of start thinking about it right maybe if, if you can get through like another like two ignites maybe that's enough health but that's tough mm -hmm. but even then you can sometimes get in these positions they go and then you're sitting there at like 14 health. You have to kill the Mazaki, and then Hunter just goes, "Cool, ignite, ignite, cram session, ignite." You're dead anyway. Because they keep shuffling in ignites. Yeah. So, you guys, do you think it's LDH, or do you think it's going to be something like a brute from base? If it Not... was brute, we should have queued it. Oh, okay. I... So. <laughs> Sorry. I think base stays on meta for the most part, and I don't expect anything wild from her. So I think it's going to be... Yeah. It's going to be the, just the fall. I'd, I'd love to see a Death Rattle DH, because Death Rattle DH is, like, pretty okay into it. It's... But then again, like, I think, again, you would just cue the DH. Yeah, I could be just yeah, fell. And, and again, I'd much rather be uh, Brute, 
Like, I, into Demon Hunter plus Mage, like, Demon Hunter is nutty. And I think it was just a question of, like, did we want Druid to try and counter? Demon Hunter to try and oh, counter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Alright, yeah, it's... It's like... Death Rattle's an interesting idea. No. I think if the Mage plays perfectly, it's only very slightly favorite for Demon Hunter. Like, like 55% or something. Because if you hit Flow, it's so unfair for Demon Hunter to try and beat that. And, eh, also, like, the newer Death Rattle builds, um... You're often running the Kurtris plus Expendable as opposed mm. to the 8 eights, And I feel like Kurtris is a worse win con against Mage because Mazaki is really happy to just not play minions for it too and then kill you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And also the, the cutting of Felsner hurts the Demon Hunter a lot because you usually sort of have to win before that turn 8 point. But, anyways, we're playing Feldy. None of that yeah, I think this is a there is pretty a good hand for there base. Is a, there is a mag in this deck as well, so, for base. Well, there's there's four freezes and not very many minions to freeze, so I don't know that it's going to get yeah. to connect. It, it probably won't, but it's uh, it's a good attempt, at least, to I mean, the, play into the deck. The consideration is more like you play mag, like you play Kurtris, and then on the next turn you play mag, and then the turn after go in on the 1-3s with the defendable. Mm -hmm. uh, but, mm -hmm. like, then by that point it's turn 8, and the mage has probably either killed you, or just, like, pops their own 1-3s and freezes mag to stop you from doing that. So, it's... Yeah, that seems like a late-game scenario that doesn't exist in, in this particular matchup. Mm -hmm. I feel like if, if you've played... If you've played the Death Knight and you have a mana for mag expendable stuff, it's probably it's like there's, turn there's this eleven really or something. Cute dream world, where you yeah. Hit off of skull, and then you're doing these fancy plays. Well, in reality, you know, Justin's burning you out on turns. Have fun with these plans. Mm -hmm. We may see a ping siphon mana next turn. On the spell yeah. order. I think there's probably a legitimate argument for holding back Felgorder because of that possible. Right. The other weird thing is though, Justin's hand doesn't benefit that much from one mana discounts. It's yeah. like a lot of zero mana cards and um, a minion. It's still probably better than Multicaster. Mm -hmm. Well, because we've oh. only played Arcane so far. So we could even drop the Flurry and then go ping. I like it's actually like, doing yeah. that. I don't think we need these Flurries. You could, yeah, you can Flurry Multicaster. That's not insane. I guess you have too many cards. You'd have yeah. to play a coin. You'd have to yeah. play a coin, yeah. Burning, burning the coin definitely feels a little awkward. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think the options are like the the ping the siphon man as. I could see a, a flurry. Ignite, could flurry ignite right? face. And maybe you do the you do the ignite next siphon. turn with the um the multicaster and you can get an extra card. Mm -hmm. And for the Demon Hunter, we're just really, really trying to draw Jace because that's pretty much the only way we win. Talented Arcanist on. and Del Barraging can do a good amount. Usually, like, we need Jace on turn 8 and we need to be... Uh... Seems like a decent refreshing, but might also. I like the multicaster more. Caster. Okay, we've got a flow, so that's probably going to happen. So the thing about Mizaki Mage is it has to actually draw the Mizaki, right? So there's an inherent built in failure rate for if Mizaki's like bottom five or something, <laughs> then yeah. 
you may not actually have the damage you need. Yeah, I mean, with with the ability to ignite and so the addition of extra burn spells in the form of yeah, yeah, Siphon. you're right. I I think it, it's certainly not going to matter in this world, but you can usually maybe against the druid. Game. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I, I think that um, in this matchup, it's more not having the Mazaki is the problem. Yeah, I I wouldn't even mind a lab partner cram session here. Actually, we can't do it this turn, but like next turn, lab partner cram session. Yeah. Hey, there's Mag. It's discounted too. Wait, is there's your dream Jace. coming true? <laughs> there's there's Kurt. All right. Go like lab partner. First flame. I guess yeah. yeah. Start with the game session. Oh, we got Mizaki. Okay. I think we're good now. Yes. Could probably freeze multicaster, thin the deck out. Are we gonna are siphon we mana? Do we have? We don't have a flurry in here. Do we? No, we don't have a flurry. Okay. I, I couldn't. There are too many cards. I couldn't see them. <laughs> I thought the, I thought the uh, mana biscuit was a flurry. From yeah, the I think we're gonna <laughs> siphon mana here to get everything causes. Just going in with Mizaki next turn. Um, if we leave up a six one, are we ever dead? Uh, well, we should just kill it. Yeah, so we it's might the, as well kill it. The downside isn't much. Yeah, like there, there's no real downside to. Kill. You might as well. And so let's see here. We already have eighteen damage in hand, like right now. I I think eighteen damage in hand, so we need six. More spells. Lethal. The same. If my math is correct. Yeah, well, the it's going to be... The Ignites are going to be 4, 5, and 6, right? And then we have to hit some stuff off the cram session, so we need... Um, it's pretty likely. I think you just have to hit a couple... Of, you need, like, two spells. Which may be, may be trickier than I'm thinking. No, now, now it's probably not. Mm. That's probably enough spells. Yeah, because now we have 14 with no spells played. Each spell gives us four extra damage, so we just need to get three or four playable spells. Yeah, this seems very good. Uh, I guess. Can we play that? Do we have the mana? I can't tell. Cause the no, we don't. Not. So I'm guessing we don't because we didn't play it. Yeah. We're just playing play the second Ignite then. I feel like we want. Ignites I wanted both the ignites in the deck. Yeah. That's okay. There, there is a slight risk with like playing burn spell before um, playing the cram because yeah, sometimes matter. we can get gonna... punished. But yeah, we're just gonna. We have enough spells here that this should be lethal. I certainly, with the mana biscuit. <laughs> Yeah, because we we have thirteen four burn spell, so we yeah, play extra spells. Because really <laughs> god, dude. No, I think it's uh, the animation times are longer for us than it is for Justin. Oh, right. No, Justin it, didn't. Wait, what? Base is alive. Base at... didn't win until base is. Oh, uh, Justin didn't get it. Why was he screwing? He was screwing around. He, he could have he... killed her. Yeah, he he was hmm. a couple over. So base just wins with Jace here because so, you just go fill barrage Jace Felbarage and it's more Jace than enough damage is... to win. Base mm -hmm. wins. Yeah, GG. More than enough damage off of Jace. Yeah, I think. Wow, that's so unfortunate for Justin. Yeah, ah, uh, Justin just messaged me. I believe he like in yeah, his, his hands or his fingers. Oh, at his no. job recently, and oh. message that fingers got him again. Dang it, man! Because I think he also we burned them in a fire last split. week. I didn't oh know God. that. I mean, obviously, yeah. the best recovery is in the end for that. 
Um, congrats, obviously, regardless, congratulations to base on, on winning the match. Um, I'll hopefully get base in here for an interview. Mm -hmm. During the client. But there you go. Base takes a three to two win over always just in time here. Um getting her team a nice start to the um to the week. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to get based in here for a quick interview. Uh, hello, based. Hello. Uh, Congrats. Yeah. Well, well played. Uh, Thank I mean, you. It, it kind of sucks to to get the uh, win because of a, a misclick at the end. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it happens. <laughs> yeah, Justin said he burned his uh, fingers in yeah. a fire and <laughs> things were difficult, but yeah. hopefully he's feeling better next time. But yeah, no, well, well done. It seems like you uh, definitely deserve the win. But the the shaman bring working out pretty well there with the doom hammer. Yeah, I don't think uh, <laughs> I don't think people are expecting it. Um, no. and it's still really good. Um, I actually three would with it last week. Um, yeah, uh, just in the Mazaki game, I never mm -hmm. drew doom hammer until very late. So uh, that's the the matchup that it's really good in. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Oh well. Um, did he have, like, a super easy clear if I didn't play a Canal Slogger in the middle of that in the game three? Yeah, well, I think so, uh, to yeah. To be fair, he had a clear was, even yeah. with the Canal Slogger. Yeah, it didn't matter. It okay. An interesting line. Wanna... <laughs> and yeah. interested, I think it's it, much to it. What happened was, by playing the minion there, you kind of baited him into thinking that you obviously didn't have Doomhammer because you were just going in. Because Doomhammer was so good that turn. And then, so he does this line where he doesn't kill the, the minions. Uh, I didn't have <laughs> Doom Hammer. I top decked it. He top I know. Like, it was some decked, really yeah. clutch top decks. He's like, yeah. his line was, if you don't have Doom Hammer, I'm just going to make you feel terrible about playing more minions. But then he, he, he immediately top decks Skull next turn and he can't play it because he's got these, he's taking four damage from these things. And it just all fell apart. So, <laughs> yeah. That's unfortunate. The yeah. top deck mind games really came together for you there. <laughs> but I guess oh, that's why yeah. you play your cards, right? I, yeah, because I, I chose to play... No, was that... That was the other game where I, like, I was playing off the top of my deck because mm -hmm. my first like three uh, turns came off the top and then I was like, well, let's just keep playing off the top. Uh, especially when I had the Canal Slogger choice. I like to, you know... Uh, against better players play from the left so that they have less time to get reads um, but mm. if it's off the top and that's how the rest of the, the draws have been going it might tell them that like oh my hand's literally dead and I just have been getting fed a card every turn which uh, I felt was true uh, in a lot of those shaman games but that's kind of just how that shaman plays yeah that's interesting I don't know if um, top deck mind games are always always a thing to think about, right? Yeah, like especially, um, you know, like when I play open cups, uh, you always top any generated lethal. You want to make them think that uh, they got lucky, maybe get in their head a little bit. Um, I mean, in THL, I don't do it as much, uh, but I'm a, I'm a firm believer in the yellow dart philosophy of BM uh, when, it's, when stakes are, are high. <laughs> BM when it's yeah, it all kind of it, kind of it. Justin in the back there because he could have killed you there if he wasn't messing around with Thanos at the end. <laughs> yeah, uh, I I did because he said he had it, and I was like, oh, um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, he was he was way over. I I mean, maybe he was going for maximizing damage, and it just unfortunately bit him. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, them's the rules sometimes. Unfortunately, yep. Yeah, I also wonder at but the yeah. end. Uh, so the hunter game, he could have probably cleared your minions. He had a guardian animals, and he resurrected the minions instead of playing the guardian yeah. animals. Um, I mean, if he, because he gets back two teachers pets, and then he has the get two three three copies of them, which I almost popped. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, I was like, "Mm, let's uh, let's clear this and go face. And I was like, wait, that's not how that works. Um, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously the burn damage got there, but yeah, yeah. Most of the time, she can eventually find something that might get there, or like devolve or or revolve or something. Mm -hmm. Um, but. Yeah. yeah, I don't think the Beast Hunter was intended to fight that particular shaman. Yeah, I don't... The uh, Hexamental really got him, I think. So Yes, that was a super clutch pick when I got that uh, going into his turn 7, because I knew that it was, I was going to have to deal with the, the get two three threes and the Mountain Bear, and I was like, if I don't have a way to, to deal with this, that could actually just be game over. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, well done. Good choice on the the shaman deck, and yeah. the mage was almost almost bad, but you got there yeah. in the end. So. I, I hate mage so much. I, I was so proud. I was so proud when I saw the the doomhammer bring. I was like, oh, this is exactly for Mozaki. I love it. Uh, I mean, it's really good in the fell. It, it's not it really good, but it's like it's fine, fine in the fell. fell. Yeah, it is. Um, and uh, he can bring most shamans into to most hunters and be fine. Yeah. Yeah, the, the one thing that interested me was the, the choice of Ram Druid and Fell Demon Hunter. I was much more expecting to see like the Ash Druid and then a Brute Demon Hunter as a counter to um, Justin's Demon Hunter. Yeah, I, I think the Ram Druid is, is not very good at all. I think it's a, kind of a bait deck that Twitter is making people play when maybe they shouldn't. Um, <laughs> it's like fine. Um, or I guess no, it wasn't last week that I swapped with Elemental. Because uh, last week I played the Ramp Druid and I got to 60 health. Uh, and the Mizaki Mage, I couldn't deal with it because uh, Mizaki was lower uh, mm-hmm. in the deck. It's like not the worst deck. It's really fun to play. Uh, just, but it's, Yeah, uh, I think it's not the worst. I think that like there are some really good Druid decks out there. Mm-hmm. So it's, there's a cost to playing that one. It, it was kind of just like uh, I could bring an Aggro Druid and get an edge against hunter or i could bring this druid and um it's pretty annoying for fell demon hunter to deal with um mm-hmm. and yeah uh like honestly bringing uh druids that get cleared by fire sale into mizaki mage um is free for them so it's like the the druid that has a chance against that one outside of you just getting a hot start um i i, I thought about if I had just gone in on the the mutinous on turn four, I think it gets there because that was the only one he put it in. He held the the spell damage minion to hedge against my mutinous on my my oh, he, he there, there was there was too. there was multicaster. There was a multi. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So it would have yeah, been. It, was, it still would have been fifty fifty. Yeah. yeah. I, I might have. I, I don't know if I like to play mutinous early. Like I want to hold it as, until I've seen multicaster come out. Yeah. And, well, at least in priest, I don't know. Druid might be different. Uh, like. My thought was like I I was thinking of going mutinous and then solar um, sizing solar <laughs> sizing to try and hit mutinous again on the the yeah. following turn, uh, but I was like oh, I could just gain armor and play mm-hmm. things that he has to deal with um, and try and slow him off with his draw plan. Uh, mm-hmm. But like I don't know when they have mutinous that early, it's just kind of the way that they win in that matchup. Uh, if they don't draw mutinous, they have to start dealing with your board um, and like spending some burn because otherwise your board and your uh, health kind of get out of reach for them. But I don't know. Uh, when to play mutinous is really hard for that. Um, but like him holding back the spell damage minion was just the like, okay, there definitely is the Mazaki in hand. All right, I wonder if real quick we can check how many seven drops there are, because I'm not sure. I, I'm looking right now it's, whether it's better to go for seven or eight. Mizaki. Uh, uh, I mean, HS lookup died, which is really unfortunate, because I would have made it super quick. But like, it's not the best odds, but uh, if they have the early Mizaki, it's pretty much the mm-hmm. the only out. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So there's there's more seven drops than eight drops. So I think going for celestial off of eight drops is like slightly more reliable 
to try and stop Mazaki. Yeah, the alignment would have been really good. That's yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. That's something we don't think about though, right? Because it's not really meta anymore. Yeah, um, it's like not unreasonable. Yeah, I probably could have just gone for the alignment. That would have been yeah. very annoying for the Mizaki. I didn't think about that. And also, like eight drops generally just seem better than seven drops. Like if you miss on the count, well, I guess if, if you miss, you kind of just lose. But there's some good stuff in there. We get the key master alabaster. Yeah. Oh, the alabaster. <laughs> alabaster. Hitting the one man of Mizaki. Yeah, just become the Mizaki mage. Mizaki yeah, druid. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure. If, I'm not sure how you get probably with spells, probably doesn't you really work. <laughs> yeah, you uh, send the lunar eclipse space. Don't. Oh, uh, we we ignore Cartex well, and just do it. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah, is Moonfire? Oh, they took Moonfire down. Uh, it's, no uh, there's, isn't there Starfire? But that's like way too much mana. No uh, way. The six, the not five, if you play a line, man. Like, the, one on. that, the one that goes, yeah. the one that's like, one that was like six mana, deal five or something, draw a card. Is that in standard? Yeah, I don't think there's any there's, there isn't spells a six that go face. That's Here. Starfire. But it's six mana, so you would have to have used alignment. All right. Um, it's not in standard. Yeah, oh, was I? Oh, there's... am I looking at wild? I am looking yeah. at wild. Okay. Here, never here's mind. the thing. Pouch for four. Get cheesemonger. True. Now. Now we're talking. Cheesemonger. You're on Hell your way yeah. to this very consistent kill. All right. Well, thank you for for this. And, thank you so um, much for playing. Yeah. Um, big GGs to to Justin. Very unfortunate with the the burn. Um, yeah, quite literally, the burn. Oh, <laughs> yeah. uh, well. It's a good series. It was fun to watch. A lot of back and forth, almost reverse. With the yeah, it, was, it definitely. I was like, oh, it's... Uh, once the, the Shaman went down, and because the Druid is still kind of shaky, uh, I was like, well, uh, goodbye. Uh, All right, well, mm-hmm. good night, y'all. Yeah. Yep, good night. Good Thanks for being here. Yep, thank you, Bates. Mm-hmm. Good night. All right, another wonderful episode of Thursday Throwdown has come and gone. Uh, I want to thank Base Inc. Always Just in Time, Lefty Two One One One, and Chewbacca for playing. I want to thank Nice Jewish Owl and Heat Shock for casting. It's always a pleasure uh, to have you guys come on and cast. I want to thank all the viewers. Uh, thank you for coming out and um, supporting players and just chatting away. Always good to see activity in the chat and. Uh, Tomorrow night, we're going to have a pretty long Friday night fight. So, Saku, Corridan, I guess, I think they're probably going to have a guest caster if it's going to be a pretty long one um, to come alongside them. So, look out for that in the announcements tab on Discord as well as the events. And we will, you know, we'll see you all hopefully next week for another Thursday Throwdown, but also tomorrow night for Friday night fights. So until then, stay safe, stay safe, everyone, and have a fantastic rest of your evening.